Sylvester and the Magic Pebble. Sylvester Duncan lived with his mother and father at Acorn Road in Oatsdale. One of his hobbies was collecting pebbles of unusual shape and color. On a rainy Saturday during vacation, Sylvester found a quite extraordinary pebble. As he was studying this remarkable pebble, he began to shiver, and the rain felt cold on his back. I wish it would stop raining. In all his young life, Sylvester had never had a wish gratified so quickly. It struck him that magic must be at work, and he guessed that the magic must be in the remarkable-looking red pebble. To make a test, he put the pebble on the ground. I wish it would rain again. Nothing happened. I wish it would rain again. What a lucky day this is. From now on, I can have anything I want. My mother and father can have anything they want. My relatives, my friends, and anybody at all can have everything anybody wants. I wish the wart on my fetlock would disappear. I wish it would stop raining. Sylvester was eager to amaze his father and mother with his magic pebble. He could hardly wait to see their faces as he was crossing Strawberry Hill, thinking of some of the many, many things he could wish for, he was startled to see a mean, hungry lion. <gasps> if Sylvester hadn't been so frightened, he could have made the lion disappear, or he could have wished himself safe at home with his oh. father and mother. He could have wished the lion would turn into a butterfly, or a daisy, or a gnat. He could have wished many things, but he panicked and couldn't think carefully. I wish... I wish I were a rock! And he became a rock. Hmm. I saw that little donkey clear as day. Maybe I'm going crazy. There was Sylvester, a rock on Strawberry Hill, with the magic pebble lying right beside him on the ground, and he was unable to pick it up. Oh, how I wish I were myself again, he thought, but nothing happened. He had to be touching the pebble to make the magic work, but there was nothing he could do about it. Being helpless, he felt hopeless. He realized his only chance of becoming himself again was for someone to find the red pebble and to wish that the rock next to it would become a donkey. The chance of that was one in a billion at best. Sylvester fell asleep. What else could he do? Meanwhile, back at home, Mr. and Mrs. Duncan were frantic with worry. Sylvester had never come home later than dinner time. Where could he be? I'll never scold Sylvester again as long as I live, no matter what he does. They stayed up all night wondering what had happened. At dawn, they went about inquiring of all the neighbors. 
Peppers. They talked to all the children, the puppies, the kittens, the colts, the piglets. No one had seen Sylvester since the day before yesterday. Even the police could not find their child. All the dogs in Oatsdale went searching for him. They sniffed behind every rock and tree and blade of grass, into every nook and gully of the neighborhood and beyond, but found not a scent of him. They sniffed the rock on Strawberry Hill, but it smelled like a rock. It didn't smell like Sylvester. After a month of searching the same places over and over again, Mr. and Mrs. Duncan no longer knew what to do. They tried their best to be happy, to go about their usual ways, but their usual ways included Sylvester, and they were always reminded of him. They were miserable. Life had no meaning for them anymore. Night followed day and day followed night, over and over again. Sylvester on the hill woke up less and less often. He felt he would be a rock forever and he tried to get used to it. He went into an endless sleep. The days grew colder. Fall came with the leaves changing color. Then the leaves fell and the grass bent to the ground. Then it was winter. The winds blew this way and that. It snowed. One day a wolf sat on the rock that was Sylvester and howled and howled because he was hungry. Then the snows melted. Leaves were on the trees again. Flowers showed their young faces. One day in May, Mr. Duncan insisted that his wife go with him on a picnic. We must try to live again and be happy, even though Sylvester, our angel, is no longer with us. They went to Strawberry Hill. The warmth of his own mother sitting on him woke Sylvester up from his deep winter sleep. How he wanted to shout, Mother, Father, it's me, Sylvester, I'm right here. But he couldn't talk. He was stone dumb. Suddenly, what a fantastic pebble. Sylvester would have loved this one for his collection. You know, Father, I have the strangest feeling that our dear Sylvester is alive and not far away. I am, I am, Sylvester wanted to shout, but he couldn't. If only he had realized that the magic pebble was resting on his back. Oh, how I wish he were here with us on this lovely May day. I wish I were myself again. I wish I were my real self again. And in less than an instant, he was. You can imagine the scene that followed. The embraces, the kisses, the questions, the answers, the loving looks and the fond exclamations. When they had eventually calmed down a bit and had gotten home, Mr. Duncan put the magic pebble in an iron safe. Someday they might want to use it, but really, for now, what more could they wish for? 
they all had all that they wanted.